hope a smooth transition and we will be there to support. I know the SMS is a very important thing and, and uh, well, let's keep working to make yeah. that transition and to make it sure. super sustainable, not super sustainable. Our next participant Thank is you. Onki Min. So Martin, if I can ask you to make Onki Min a co-host. Yes. And on um, I'm, I'm, I have to remind you that uh, please try to make your presentation in. Uh, you have a slot of ten minutes, in, uh, and I'm, I'm afraid we will not have time for everyone that we have committed to. So please try to give us your key messages and key successful examples in these ten minutes. Thank you. The floor is yours. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mother, and uh, and the organizer, and all of the THIS facilitator to uh, invite me to to be uh, present my project in Myanmar uh, in the academy. So uh, can you see my screen? Uh, yes, we yes. can see your screen. Right. It's not, uh, yeah, thank you. We are seeing your, your presenter right. view in case you don't want to. Oh, all right, so uh, okay, <laughs> let me to take my screen then, all right. How about now? Yes, now it's perfect. Please go ahead. Okay, sure. Uh, yeah, so uh, good day all. So uh, I'm Anjie Min and uh, I'm an e -help project, uh project coordinator in, in, a, uh, in, a, in a group of fam, uh, our principal recipient team uh, in at the city of Chiran Yama. And, uh, and, and here I would like to present about our tracker dep uh, deployment for malaria animation in Yama. So, and, and we call this uh, app, the Malaria Case Pay Reporting and Surveillance, the uh, MCPIS app. And our app is hosted by the BAU system and developed by the NoTecture. And uh, this is my presentation outline. So uh, which, well, yeah, and uh, which will be uh, as listed, uh, which I will be covered in, in this presentation. So, uh, in the background and objectives, as Myanmar is a malaria endemic region, and uh, as uh, we have all, or, or also uh, transitioned uh, from the malaria control program to the malaria elimination, and uh, uh, we have been focused, the background is we have to be, uh, uh, there is the increasing needs of case bait and quality data in, uh, in the elimination setting. So that we have been uh, developed this app in order to solve these challenges. And another thing is, as our end user for this app is dedicated to the uh, village health volunteer, which also call uh, community health workers. Uh, in Myanmar, we uh, we name it the MCMV, Integrated Community uh, Malaria Volunteers. So. It's also, it will be also serve as the job aid for these volunteers to improve their service quality. And, and yeah, last but not least, as uh, it is, it will be, you know, improve their the data utilization by the, by, uh, yeah, by the respective uh, program manager and the national team. So I would like to outline, I outline a bit of our development process because of, uh, we have a uh, quite complex of uh, development in a process in here because uh, like our, uh, our project started in a, in 2016 and at that time uh, like, like with the application concept defined uh, together with the national program and the partners our first prototype have been developed in 2016 which we named back then the MCPR uh, uh, without the surveillance part. So, and, and, and in a, a 2017, we have been like uh, user, uh, 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 we have been contacted, contacted the user acceptance testing and as well as the pilot testing and rollout. So, and uh, of course, at that time, we have been uh, already also uh, doing our, all after the logistic, like uh, procure most of the uh, mobile devices at at this year. So, uh, and yeah, and next year we have been continue throughout to the uh, national program and uh, our implementing partners, uh, volunteer. And yeah, interestingly, 
uh, when we are being like uh, nationally ruling out this, there is another uh, similar app, but uh, rather like at the time we our MCBRS is based on the event program, but not the tracker one. And and interestingly, there is a, a, a new app which is called MCBS, the, the case based surveillance app, uh, developed by WHO uh, in 2018 uh, to use this in the uh, malaria elimination. But they lack the reporting part. So that uh, and finally, in, in 2018, we have been discussed to integrate these two parts into one as a uh, final integrated national tool for the malaria elimination. So, and, and yeah, and, and, and at, the, at the start of the 2019, we have been initiating the process of data integration and, and hopefully, uh, and with a bit of love, of course, uh, the University of Oslo, the, uh, the team, uh, Mada, you all have been uh, released the Android Capture app. So it is uh, very handy for us to, you know, like, integrate all of these, our event program and the tracker to, to into one, just uh, uh, these uh, into, into the Android capture. So I uh, like, uh, uh, since the start of the 2019, we have been developed the MCBRS, which is based on the uh, tracker program using the Android capture app. And uh, yeah, and, and this year we have been deploying MCBRS and uh, the transition from MCBR to MCBIS already uh, near the, near near the end. So in here, uh, a more <laughs> uh, complex thing is that we also have an organizational structure, organization unit structure changes in these two uh, part. Like in previously in the MCBR. Uh, our organization unit structure is based on the uh, village track and village, but in the MCBIS is we have been changes to the in order to align with the health administrative layer, and it is uh, renamed with the uh, rural health center and the sub center, and then our end user will be the volunteer uh, in India. So it is a bit challenging for us, and yeah, it is complex to do, but uh, nevertheless we have been enjoying all of these. Uh, process. And yeah, of course, uh, for the guidelines and document, documentation, we have been uh, uh, developed in our local, cont uh, local languages and as well as other uh, a bit of the uh, necessary man user manual. So uh, regarding the, our MCPS uh, feature, we have been uh, to ease our at uh, our user, we have been like uh, created a uh, uh, called a volunteer app in the DHIS2, like uh, in order to ease the uh, creating of the new user at the local, local level and also, you know, to be more customizable uh, with the local context. And this is the, uh, yeah. And another thing is since uh, at the, like before the transition of the MCPIS, we have been uh, see that most of the of our user in the DHIS do just use the you know uh, event report mostly so that uh, we have been have an idea to develop the uh, standardized dashboard for all of our partners. And uh, yeah, it is a quite bit uh, challenging for us right now, and uh, because of we uh, in in this feature development process we have been also include the malaria positive case notification which is trigger find our setting program rule, like if there is any or any positive case detected the, from, the, from, from the mobile devices, uh, it will be automatically trigger the notification alert uh, to the respected township worker. So this is the implementation at a glance. So right now we have been, uh, have a uh, hundred more townships and uh, the, our user is 3,500, more than 3,500. Uh, and yeah, this is the separate cases. Uh, we have been like having the more than 300,000 cases reported and uh, have a two thousand more than 2,000 positive cases reported. Uh, so for the challenges and issue, like uh, for most, the majority contribute to the human capacity. 
like uh, the lack of digital literacy in the volunteer. It is very quite uh, challenging and complex for, for us because of they even have, uh, you know, they didn't have a uh, basic phone French. They didn't even know uh, that kind of thing. So that uh, we have been, we have to make sure to know that. And another thing challenging is like, as we are hosting our MCBIS in the Google Play Store, we have to create all of the Google account for them. So, which mean like it's more than 3000 Google account, uh, our partners have to be created. And there is a, a double burden of reporting in Volantia because of right now we, uh, we don't abandon the paper base yet. So that there is two uh, reporting channel, so which increase their burden. And another thing is the, our challenge is the low frequency of the monitoring and supervision to detect these, uh, our back end issue and uh, respectively the technical issue, mobile devices and the internet coverage. And in here, uh, I would like to mention a bit about the technical because of like, as you all know, we have been all seen uh, face these technical challenges. And, and another thing is that we, we are unable to update the version, you know, like timely or continuously because of like in here, we have been like uh, for our MCPR is event capture app we use. And we upgraded to the Android capture app version 1.3.1. And right now we will be upgrade, uh, updated to the 2.3. So like Sorry, Uncle, Uncle Min, I need to remind you that um, you should be finishing in the next minutes. Thank you. Yes, uh, yes, it is. Uh, I'm I'm concluded. It's near finished. Thank you, Mara, for reminding. No, me. but please finish your at least your sentence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, for for the lesson learn, um, we have to consider the the effectiveness rather than the skill in our implementation. So like. Sometimes we have to like to make a pause and to reassess and evaluate our implementation. And and another thing is, although yeah, uh, there will be multiple factor to uh, contributing to affect the data, the data quality and completeness, but uh, it is mainly due to the lack of human capacity and willingness to act on it. And yeah, and uh, for our lesson learned, oh, we have to always, cons please always cons consider to uh, pre procure the mobile devices in a frequent patches rather than massive one because of we will be left behind with this. Uh, thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Can you see my screen? Yes, that's perfect. <clears throat> So good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, I am uh, Dr. Abdurrahman Shahab uh, from Afghanistan. I'm working as a senior technical advisor with HealthNet International TPO. And I would uh, like to present uh, my plans for the electronic immunization registry tracker program in Afghanistan. This is a planned project uh, as uh, in distinction to the previous two colleagues uh, who presented uh, their existing projects. Uh, I will just briefly ex uh, say a few words about HealthNet International TPO. It's a Netherlands-based international NGO and uh, it's working in many countries. In Afghanistan, it works uh, since 1994 and it works in uh, public health care, mental health and psychosocial support public health research, public health capacity building sectors. And there is a link to the website if uh, you're interested to know more about the organization. <clears throat> I have taken a few screenshots from the WHO uh, on website about the utilization of DHIS2 in Afghanistan. I will briefly go through uh, the few um, uh, pages. Uh, the, this one uh, is about uh, the utilization of uh, DHIS2 for, for health information system in Afghanistan. It's in a pilot uh, phase and it's only implemented at the provincial level, meaning that uh, DHIS2 is used by provincial uh, HMIS officers uh, to enter data. And then uh, Currently, we have DHIS2 for COVID-19. And it was listed that it's also used for other tracker uses. I don't know what 
could be those uses I will find out later. Uh, and uh, for the Android app, I think there is no official um, utilization for Android app in Afghanistan as it's listed on the WHO website. And uh, the reason uh, why I would like to use DHIS2 for uh, um, child immunization is uh, based on uh, the low coverage and the drop out and uh, uh, the, the, the problems with paper-based system and also the loss uh, of children to the completion and the missing uh, of immunization cards by mothers. So the paper-based system everyone knows have uh, has many challenges uh, and uh, um, with the uh, availability of DHIS2, we can uh, uh, address many of these challenges. I have uh, put some figures here about uh, the coverage of a few um, vaccine uh, vaccines in Afghanistan, although it does not uh, seem bad. Uh, um, these fig figures are uh, the WHO estimates, the national figures are much higher than this. The figures the Ministry of Public Health is putting, but these are the figures that uh, could be trusted to a major degree. And uh, uh, the model I am planning to use is based on uh, the WHO electronic immunization registry, which is a tracker, mo tracker mo uh, data model. Uh, where uh, um, data will be collected by individuals, meaning children. And uh, the basis would be the Afghanistan standard immunization schedule. And I would like to pilot this in one health facility in one district where my organization is currently implementing uh, uh, primary and secondary health services uh, through one program here in Afghanistan, which we call Sehat Mandi. It's a basic package of health services and essential package of hospital services based program. So I, I would uh, be implementing this tracker program in one district, which is relatively secure and uh, the population could easily be tracked. And the program will be linked uh, to HMI indicator and uh, the program will generate reports at the aggregate level. This is a general schematic presentation of uh, the program I am planning to implement. From the left side corner, you can see that uh, the um, tablet or mobile in the health facility given to the vaccinator will be used to register children with all the required demographics and everything. And the stages they will be completing through follow-up schedules. And then the mothers will be uh, visiting the health facility for the scheduled visits. And they will be receiving SMS alerts through their phone or their, through their family members' phones. Uh, and in case uh, the child is missing or goes defaulter, so the SMS will go to the CHW and also to the family and probably to the designated village elder. And uh, the data from uh, the individual cases will be collected and compiled and reported uh, on monthly basis uh, through the standard channel we have to the central office of uh, our organization and then to the Ministry of Public Health. I have taken this schema from Martha's presentation. I hope I have not breached the uh, property rights. So we will go through all these stages and uh, thanks for this uh, nice uh, uh, training. I got alerted to take many things into account now, like how I was thinking about the DHIS2 deployment priorly. It has changed dramatically. So we'll be um, doing many things in each of these steps. And uh, I will 
be requesting support from different people in this uh, forum and i would uh, request uh, the facilitators to share the uh, email addresses of uh, the participants who are willing to share their emails so that we can have uh, a network for support although we have the community uh, dhs2 community but this group can also have uh, communication and coordination in future so i will be needing support in each of these steps from different uh, colleagues um, in the DHIS2 community. The challenge is uh, we have in Afghanistan. I will also uh, highlight that uh, in this uh, survey we completed before, uh, I have responded to the questions about another DHIS2 program we have in our organization that's uh, an aggregate uh, uh, model based. Uh, HMIS program, which is in a, the design phase. So we have uh, mm, discovered many challenges in that uh, uh, program and th those challenges will we will face again in the mm, uh, EPI tracker program. The first one is internet coverage. We have, uh, I can say around 50% of health facilities uh, in the country have uh, access to internet and uh, there is shortage of uh, qualified staff uh, for the design uh, and deployment in Afghanistan. And the other major challenge is insecurity. Uh, in many places, even if there is internet coverage, uh, um, keeping a mobile device would uh, uh, trigger many sensitive uh, sensitivities and reactions from the opposition group. So that's uh, uh, another challenge in insecurity is also a challenge for movement of uh, the people who will be deploying the system. And finally, the bureaucratic process in the rollout phase uh, in Afghanistan uh, in the stage where we would like to um, uh, roll out the program at the national level through the MOPH that would need a lot of bureaucratic approvals and things. So these are the major challenges we are foreseeing and hopefully we will be able to overcome all these challenges. So thank you very much. And uh, if there are any questions, uh, I'll be more than happy to respond through Slack or here. Thank you very much. I will finish. So thank you, Marta. It was a last minute presentation. As I told you yesterday, I just bring some uh, here and there and uh, apologies for any inconsistency. So I'm presenting from Ethiopia. I am working for uh, Amr Health Africa, which is a African-based uh, international org NGO headquartered in Nairobi, Kenya. So I'm currently working for USAID funded uh, project called USAID Transform Health in Developing Regions which works uh, in the four developing regions uh, of uh, Ethiopia, the borders. You see the, here we, we have one region, the other one here, and uh, two on the Western part of the country. So the project is implemented by AMREF, as I said, uh, who, who leads a, co a consortium of uh, organizations, Projecto, Pintra Health, and General Electric Healthcare are also member of this consortium. Uh, we have 56 uh, districts. What it does means in Ethiopia, they are, it's, it's to mean districts. We work with in 56 districts of these four, uh, these four uh, regions. So we started in 2017, it will uh, end in 2022. So we're using the HIS2 event program to, to monitor standard of care in, uh, in uh, these uh, regions. The project is mainly on maternal and child health. So we want to monitor the standard of health, the quality of care in maternal and child health service. So we have a checklist that was uh, being used before, uh, before building it into DHIS2. Actually, we are lucky that we adopted both the checklist as well as uh, DHIS2 metadata from a sister project working in the central part of the country. Similar projects, similar funding from USAID, but different geographic locations. So they, they were using that before we came into the picture. So it was tested and um, deployed by that uh, project. 
So we adapted it as it as it so the steps that Marta was explaining yesterday were not uh, we're not in that process. So we just deploy it uh, in, into our context. So we have uh, checklists for different levels of the the health system. We have a community level checklist. We have uh, a health center checklist and the health posts, which are the hierarchies of the health system in the country. We also have a household survey checklist what that we do uh, every year to see the coverage of some of the key um, maternal and neonatal health uh, indicators. So we have also a hospital follow-up. We also have, as I, tried, I was explaining uh, previously in our um, training in our academy, we also have a database, a training database that we monitor. We, we, all, we monitor the number of participants with that we provide different uh, trainings. So we use the data, the, the Android capture app to, to, to collect data, but we also use a, a bulk upload as I tried to explain uh, yesterday, yesterday or the day before to upload the training data from a, an Excel uh, template that is downloaded from the, this uh, bulk upload app uh, built by WHO. We started using this after the last uh, uh, DHIS conference, which, uh, which I, I participated. So we have we had a problem in using and in, uh, entering uh, training data in the in the web capture app. So after the, after we get acquainted with, the, with this app, we, it was a very interesting app, and we're using it for bulk upload. So these are the programs uh, that I tried to explain. These are the this is one of the events that the health center checklist. It has many sections. It has different uh, program components. So we have questions under each program component. And this one is a training database actually, which has also sections. So we use uh, the bulk upload, the capture app, as well as Android uh, app to, to enter uh, data into the, the DHIS2 instance. As a result of this, we can now see coverage. So these, these are the dashboards that I just uh, cropped and bring it to, from the system. So you can see the trend of uh, most of the key indicators from 2018 to 2019 and then 2020. This is from the household survey where we see the contraceptive uh, coverage of uh, in these districts that we support. And we the, pentav the pentavalent third, third dose, which is the immunization coverage. So th these are the, ch the, the, the results of uh, using DHIS2 as a standard of care monitoring and as, a, as ML, actually a main monitoring and evaluation tool. So we report these indicators to the donor directly from the, the, the system. And these are other uh, the, the dashboard items that I, I, I brought. And the biggest challenge you have is now, uh, we, we, I was reaching out to Jaime and now my, our colleagues from uh, Rwanda is helping us to secure our server. It was not a secure server. So we're working with DDR and uh, uh, hopefully it will be secured. And, and because it was not a secure server, it was frequently blocked by our local uh, telecom provider. Hopefully after this will be, and uh, it was difficult sometimes to, to, to also use, uh, to, uh, to also use because of the blockage, sometimes data entry was delayed uh, from the field, from the users and infrastructure as uh, my colleagues, pre uh, previous presenters uh, pointed out is also a big challenge because as you might have uh, noticed, we're working on the peripheral areas of the country where coverage to the internet and electricity is very, uh, is, is, is a very, is very challenging. This is all Marta. It was uh, a last minute uh, thing, but it's helpful, I think. It was fantastic, thank you. And it was uh, very, yeah, very, very good. And very good to see that you are already using the, the Android app. So I think I would say if, um, if uh, in general for, for all, if you don't see yourself, your project, your sorry, we are having a bit of an electrical storm here. I don't know if you <laughs> could hear that, but if I disappear, it's because of that. Um, so what was I saying? If you don't see your country or your project slash country in the maps for the HIS2, uh, we will talk later about the community. I encourage you to, to, to send us a message in the community, tag us and, uh, and make sure we, and make sure we 
we publish your 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 project there because we are aware we are aware that we are not aware of all the projects in the in the world using the HIS two. So and, and and for Android it's very clear because we see the statistics uh, from uh, Google Play of usage. We don't have a clue on the activity or the number of users, but we see there is action that is from the app. And, and it's way more than what we actually know. So I invite you to share in the community. We'll let you, let you know later how. I'm checking the, the Slack channel.